I'm not in charge, but I work on it. Now God, it's preaching time. 
And so, Father, I pray even now that your power would flow through me and your words would flow out of my mouth to your people. God, speak a word of life in this house, a word of instruction, a word of encouragement, even a word of correction. God, you know what we need. And so, Lord, we pray that you would send it. I am just a humble vessel, but you are creator of the universe. Use me now in Jesus' name. Speak up for your servant ears. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Unity in the community. Many years ago, a friend of mine, my friend Allison, informed me that she was taking a trip. She had an opportunity to travel to the continent of Africa. And as we discussed her trip prior to her leaving, I had to admit to her that I was a little jealous. I was a little envious. Because traveling to Africa was one of my lifelong dreams at that time. It was on my bucket list. Upon her return, she contacted me and she was telling me about her trip and she informed me that she brought me something back. And I was excited. The gift that she brought me was a beautiful handcrafted colorful banner with a Swahili saying at the bottom. And the saying translated into English said, our unity is poison to others. Now the implication of this saying is that when we are unified with one mind and one purpose, striving together, that unity, our unity, serves as a destructive force to anyone that seeks to oppose us. Unity in the body of Christ is a central theme in the New Testament text. And Jesus prayed this prayer concerning his disciples. He said, protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. John 17 and 11. In many of the letters written by the Apostle Paul, unity in the spirit is a reoccurring theme that Paul emphasizes to the various churches to which he is writing. To the Romans, he writes, So in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the others, as Romans 12 and 5. To the saints at Corinth, he writes these words, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. However, when we take a look at our world today, we find that we live in a country that is everything but united. The truth be told, our country today is fractured and divided. There is a pervasive spirit of marginalization as evidenced by the popularity of the rhetoric of presidential candidate Donald Trump that seeks to demonize and ostracize one group that happens to be different from mainstream America, whatever that means. Various groups, which are staunchly opposed to one another, refuse to make an effort to find commonality in the midst of their differences. Republicans are against Democrats, and nowadays some Republicans are against other Republicans. They don't know what to do with themselves. Liberals are against conservatives. The haves are against the have-nots. But the Bible says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. How long will this country be able to survive when division and disunity is the order of the day? And in these perilous times, the church, the body of Christ, the called out ones, the born again 
and believers, the beacon of light in this dark world, has a distinct opportunity to be an example of unity amongst diversity. However, as I take a critical look, even at the church, I find that there are factions that have formed and divisions that are present, even in the church. And so I have solicited this morning the expertise of the Apostle Paul so that we may get back on track and have unity in the community. Somebody say amen. amen. In Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, First chapter in the 27th verse, Paul admonishes the saints with these words. He says, whatever happens, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, however you may be attacked, whatever your circumstances happen to be, conduct yourselves in a manner that is worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That means it doesn't matter what you are facing in your life. It does not give us reason and justification not to reflect the character of Jesus Christ. One of the first keys to maintain unity in the spirit and unity in the community is self-management. Somebody say self-management. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, unity starts with me. I'm going to talk about this a little later, but the first thing that Paul encourages us to do is to maintain proper conduct that is worthy of and congruent with the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, we need to be diligent in order to ensure that our personal conduct and attitude reflects the character of Jesus Christ. That's why I, I have a problem in it. If you've been watching the news and listening to the news, you may have heard about this situation about the Westboro Church in Texas. And if you haven't been watching the news, and if you haven't heard, start watching it. Because as the church, we cannot be like that proverbial ostrich with our heads in the sand. We need to know what is going on. But the Westboro Church basically boycotting and picketing anybody that is not perfect like they are. And I have a problem with this because how can we draw people to Jesus Christ when we do not extend to them the same grace that met us when we needed it? The Bible says that it's by his loving kindness that he has drawn us. Jesus never drew anybody by condemning them. He never drew anybody by dogging them out. He never drew anybody by counting and, and, and highlighting their sins. But by his loving kindness, he drew them. Paul, Paul goes on to say that I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Now in the original Greek, the term striving together is used in the area of athletic competition. And it denotes the members of a team working together in order to obtain victory for the whole team. That means each and every person has to function in their particular gifting together so that victory can be won for the whole. If we are to be a successful church, each member must work cooperatively in their area of expertise and gifting. Therefore, each member makes a vital and necessary contribution to the welfare of the whole. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number four, Paul gives us several key elements to maintaining unity in the community. The Bible says that 
Paul tells us to be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Let me break this down a little bit. The first key to maintaining unity is to remain humble. Somebody say humble. Again, Paul reminds us that unity begins with self-management. We need to guard against the spirit of pride and arrogance that jeopardizes fellowship with one another, recognizing that everybody in the body of Christ is gifted. Everybody in the body of Christ is essential. And everybody in the body of Christ is vital. of God. I can't do what you do like you do when you do it. You can't do what I do like I do when I do it. But if you do what you do and I do what I do, the whole body of Christ is then built up and edified. And so we need to make sure that we are in our power glory of God. For warns, Paul warns against the spirit of pride. In Romans chapter number 12, verse number 3, he says, because of the privilege and authority God has given to me, I give each and every one of you this warning. Do not think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Again, self-management. You can't read nobody else if you are not first handling you. Measuring yourselves by the faith God has given to us. We are not to measure ourselves by the gifts that God has given us. Because the Bible says that gifts come without repentance. Talents are just, are given to men. We are not to, to measure ourselves by how long we've been in the church. I've been in this church for 40 years. I've been here longer than the pastor. It doesn't matter if you've been in the church for 40 years. For 40 years, you have never grown in your faith. It's by the faith that God has given us that we should measure ourselves and how we have exercised that faith in our lives. What good is your gifts if your faith is shaken? If your faith is shaken, you can be able to sing like an angel and preach like Paul. But what do you do when the enemy comes for you? Do you stand on the faith that you preach about? Do you believe what you sing about? Nobody had more reason to be boastful and to be arrogant than the Apostle Paul. His qualifications were impeccable. Sat at the best teachers. He was a Hebrew of Hebrew, a Pharisee of Pharisees. But when Paul measured all of those accomplishments and put them on the scale next to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, Paul had to come to this conclusion. All of that stuff that I have accomplished, all my education, all my pedigree, Jesus Christ. Give us your name, Mr. Neighbor.
Old neighbor. Stay humble. Paul continues to give us valuable information in order for us to maintain the unity in the community by informing us that we need to be patient. Somebody say patient. Oh my God. This might be a little difficult for some people because I have heard so many people say, well, I just don't have any patience. <laughs> Stop saying that, you lie. <laughs> you have patience. Ask me how I know. Thank you. <laughs> because if you are a, are a born again believer in Jesus Christ, and if you have the Spirit of the living God living inside you, there is a promise that we find in Galatians chapter 5. And the promise to you is this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, oh, there it is. <laughs> Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Not only do we need to be patient with each other, but we also need to be patient with the plan of God for our lives. Let me explain what I mean. Many times when we are waiting for God to manifest the plan that he has spoken to us, we become impatient and irritated in our waiting. And because we cannot take it out on God, we tend to take it out on each other. However, we need